Hello everybody. Welcome to our new series, Dive In. I'm so excited to see all of you here today. I can't wait to play games, sing, and explore the wonders of the sea as we discover what it means to follow Jesus. What's up, my friends? My name is Jake. Welcome back. I hope that you're ready because this is going to be a splash. I love the ocean and all the amazing things that God has created to go in it. One way that we can get all of our fins in motion is to play a game. There's so much to learn and explore and I'm ready to dive right in. One way that we can get our fins in motion is to play a game. And I've got a super fun one for you. It's called Follow the Pearl. First, you'll see a pearl and we'll hide it in one of our three clams and they will all start to move around. So make sure you keep your eyes on that pearly prize. When the clams start to shuffle, you follow the pearl until they stop and then you guess which clam shell the pearl is hiding in. It's gonna be so fun. So if you're ready, count down with me from three and we'll say shuffle. Ready? Three, two, one, shuffle! That was so fun! It's amazing that a beautiful pearl is formed inside of a clamshell, which is one of my favorite facts about God's incredible ocean creations. You see, a regular old piece of sand makes its way into the clam, and if it hangs out with the clam long enough, it changes and becomes a shiny pearl. And that actually makes me think of what it's like to follow Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus chooses regular people, like you and me, to follow him. And when we hang out with Jesus every day, he changes us, just like the pearl changes. Following Jesus is the best decision anyone could make. And one way to follow Jesus is to spend time getting to know him. That's actually what I want you to know today. So let me hear you say this after me as loud as you can. Get to know Jesus. That's right. Because this song we're about to sing is all about who Jesus is and all of the awesome things he does. When we sing, we're getting to know him a little better. So, let's do that now. Clap our hands and praise your name.
Great singing. You can take a seat. Let's play Shark, Fish, Crab. You'll have five seconds to choose which sea creature you want to be. You can either be a shark, a fish, or a crab. If your sea creature disappears from the screen, you'll sit down. If you're ready to play, stand up and choose your creature. Round one, here we go. Fish wins that round. Now choose a sea creature for round two. Shark wins. Choose one more time for round three. Fish wins again. Good game, everybody. You can take a seat. Oh, hello there, friends. I'm so glad you're here hanging out with me again. Have you ever heard the saying, star light, star bright? You may have heard that when talking about the beautiful stars that shine in the night sky. But when I hear that phrase, I can't help but think of one of God's most bright and beautiful creations, the starfish. And no, not the Pokemon. I'm talking about real starfish of the deep blue. There's so much to this special animal and the more I research, the more I find. For example, did you know that when a starfish gets hurt, it can actually heal itself? You heard that right. If a starfish breaks an arm, it can simply regrow that arm. Good as new. Not only that, if the starfish senses it's in trouble, it can even shed those arms to scare off the predator and grow them back over time. That's pretty cool, right? But that's not all there is to these little guys. We're just barely scratching the surface, actually. When I say starfish, you're probably thinking of a traditional star-shaped animal. But as I dove in further, I found that there are actually more than 2,000 different types of starfish. And while it's true that most only have five arms, there are some that can have up to 40 arms. Can you imagine how many groceries you could help your mom carry if you had 40 arms? Take the sunflower starfish, for instance. It has 24 arms and can grow to be 40 inches wide. That's as big as your bathtub. Another cool thing I've learned about starfish is that they don't actually have brains. Crazy, right? But they do have an eye on the end of each of their arms, and when starfish get hungry, they just wrap their arms around a muscle or clam to pull the shell open. Then the craziest thing happens. The starfish's stomach comes out of its mouth and into the shell, and once its belly is full, the stomach just goes right back to where it came from. You may have thought you knew starfish, but there are so many things still to find out. You see, we could research every day and probably never find all there is to know about these interesting creatures. In the same way, we may know some things about Jesus, but there's still so much to learn. We can get to know him more by reading our Bibles, looking at creation, kind of like we're doing with the starfish right now, and by talking to people who already follow Jesus and asking what they know about him. These are just a few of the ways you can get to know Jesus. And the good news is, the longer you follow him, the more you'll learn. 
That was fascinating. Can you believe all there is to know about starfish? We learn something new every time Cora comes around. And I love how she always finds a way to help us understand more about how everything in creation points to Jesus. That reminds me of a story from the Bible. Here, take a look. God's story. Peter denies Jesus. So remember how part of God's story is about a guy named Peter who walked on water with Jesus? Well, it goes like this. Peter followed Jesus, but like all of us, he wasn't perfect. Sometimes he messed up. One time, he even pretended not to know Jesus at all. Here's what happened. Jesus and his 12 disciples were going to different towns, showing more and more people that Jesus is God's son. But some people did not believe Jesus is God's son. They thought that was impossible. And they got so mad that Jesus said he was God's son that they tried to have him arrested, even killed. Turns out, Jesus had to die to rescue us. See, he was perfect, yet chose to come to our broken world and live and die just like us. But then he came back to life, which means Jesus really was sent from God and really is stronger than death. So now, even though we all mess up, we can follow Jesus and one day live with him forever. But at the time, Peter and the other disciples couldn't have known all that. They believed Jesus was God's son, but they didn't know how he would rescue us. One night, Jesus did get arrested. Peter and the disciples were sad and scared. And they could get into trouble too, just for following him. So when a servant girl recognized Peter and said, this man was with Jesus, Peter said, I don't know him. Then someone else called Peter a follower of Jesus and he said, I am not. A third person said Peter knew Jesus and Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. Right then, a rooster crowed and Peter realized what he had done. In fact, Jesus had told Peter that he was going to deny him three times before the rooster crowed. But guess what? That means Jesus knew Peter would mess up before he even did anything. And Jesus loved him anyway. The best part is, he feels the same way about us. Peter would keep on following Jesus and show many more people how to follow Jesus. And we can too. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Peter messed up. People arrested Jesus. Peter pretended he didn't know Jesus. He did it again. He did it a third time. The rooster crowed. Jesus still loved Peter. We mess up too. Jesus still loves us. Peter followed Jesus. We can follow Jesus too. And that's a part of God's story. To think that Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, pretended that he didn't know Jesus is just mind blowing. But one of the coolest things that that story shows us is that Jesus knows us, and he knows that we mess up, and he loves us anyway. The more you get to know Jesus, the more you'll see just how loving and forgiving he really is. Okay, I wanna see if you can remember some things we've talked about today. So check this out. How many times did Peter say he didn't know Jesus? A, three, B, five, C, one, or D, all of the above? Three times, you got it. But Peter did know Jesus. He had spent a lot of time with Jesus for three years and had actually gotten to know him really well. Okay, ready for the next one? How can you and I get to know Jesus? A, read the Bible. B, look at his creation. C, talk with people who follow Jesus. Or D, all of the above. Yes! Those are just a few of the ways that we can get to know Jesus more. You guys, today has been so much fun, and I hope that you'll come back next week. Before you go, let's pray together. Jesus, you are awesome. We love you, and we want to get to know you more and more. Please show us how to follow you every day. Amen. It's time for me to go, but the fun's not over yet. Check this out. Get on your feet, it's time to sing. Now
great job. We had the best time diving into what God wanted to say to us today. You can take a seat. There's a verse in the Bible that reminds us what Jesus wants us to do when we follow him. So let's practice it together. Come and follow me, Jesus said. I will send you out to fish for people. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. Come and follow me, Jesus said. I will send you out to fish for people. Mark chapter 1, verse 17. I had so much fun with all of you today. I can't wait to see you all again soon.